Hello and welcome uh, to this short session of the normal radiographic anatomy of the canine thorax. My name is Pete Mantis and in the next few minutes we will go through how the various organs in the thorax appear normal and how we can use some rule of the thumbs to actually uh, make us more confident in our decision whether they are bigger, smaller, normal or abnormal. Normally, we all know the thorax is totally loosened and the lung is totally loosened and it contains vessels and bronchi that gives this opacity. We all understand we have to look both on the lateral and VD or DV view so that every time each organ is evaluated on these orthogonal views to get this three-dimensional appearance in order to get the full abnormality. And we all know we have to use the radiographic signs, number, size, shape, location, margination, and radiopacity. Here, I will go first on the lateral, then on the VDDV to go through the various uh, views to just get an, an idea of how they look up normally in each view. We'll start with the lateral and start with the trachea. The trachea is this loosened structure, almost uniform in diameter, and finishes in the bifurcation, which is the carina, the short, more loosened area, caudally. Now, it should be relatively uniform throughout. It should create a small angle with the spine of about 10 to 15 degrees, no more no less and one measurement we can use in adult dogs is actually the diameter here to the diameter of the thoracic inlet at the same level so if i divide the diameter of the trachea to the thoracic inlet in non-brachycephalic bridge it should normally be less than 0 0.2 in brachycephalic less than 0 0.16 and in bulldogs can be up to less than 0 0.13. In bulldogs, it can even go down to 0 0.07. They are uh, sometimes what I like to call the abnormal, normal breed. Now, that's for the trachea, something that we can use all easily. And then I will move to the mediastinum, where we can see this area below. This is the cranial mediastinum, just below the trachea. As you can see, it's opaque, and we cannot see any detail inside. Moving to the cardiac silhouette, we can see here, for interpretational lesions, we assume a line from the carina to the apex and then a transverse one cutting it through into four chambers thinking that's the left atrium left ventricle right ventricle right atrium it's important to emphasize this is only for trying to interpret which chamber is big otherwise there is a big overlap in reality and that doesn't correspond to the actual reality there a measurement we can do easily, and especially I recommend it in dogs, uh, if we don't have any specific breed-related vertebral heart score, is from the carina to the apex line. We measure the maximal width x vertical to that line, and we go to the fifth rib and move this x two-thirds up and this x in the dog should be less than three intercostal space while in the cats it should be less than two intercostal space so this is a quick rule of the thumb that we can actually use another thing that probably most are familiar is measure the height and then measure the width so a and b and then start from t4 
putting the A and the B and count how many vertebrae are including and that is what is called the vertebral heart score which is very very useful if you have a reference for that particular breed because the original uh, eight and a half to ten and a half cannot apply to all breeds so we can use that better if we have a reference for the breed otherwise it's very useful when we compare the cardiac silhouette in two separate occasions when we go and check the cardiac silhouette actually if it became bigger or smaller in the same animal that can help us identify that now the shape of the heart it's different for various breeds for example narrow chested breeds they have to have a taller heart while uh, barrel chested breeds they tend to have a more rounded heart in cats for example uh, the right ventricle may attach more to the sternum than in dogs as they get older it's even more all this you have to acquire with experience when you see a normal radiograph of a dog see the breed the conformation and how is the shape of that we have the coda vina cava at the back and this triangle usually between the diaphragm codal aspect of the cardiac silhouette and the coda vina cava is what can give us an impression of how well inflated the view of the radiograph is of course we have always the triad artery bronchus vein everywhere and when we evaluate the width on the lateral of an artery or a vein the maximum we go to the proximal third of the fourth rib and that width should be less or equal to the proximal third of the fourth rib coming now to uh, the aorta which we can see going up as you can see it is visible but not extremely clear and don't forget coda vena cava cardiac silhouette and aorta are mediastinal structures then we come to the lung lobes we have the cranial middle caudal and the accessory lung lobes that's the rough area we can always see the visual lines if we have thickening of the pleura or if we have fluid in the pleura now we can see that the lung lobes they usually have a nice pointy margin and we can identify sometimes bronchi that they shouldn't be thick and vessels that we can measure On the dorsal ventral view again, just a quick reminder for the lung, we have a cranial, middle, caudal, accessory lung lobe on the right, and the cranial and caudal on the left. The cranial has a cranial part and a caudal part on the left. It just has to do with the way the mainstem bronchi are divided in each side. We can see the trachea coming and divided into the two mainstem bronchi a little bit to the right. Uh, we can see the cranial mediastinum, which in most dogs, with the exception of bulldogs, they have a lot of fat in there, should not be more than twice the width of a thoracic vertebra. So A should be less or equal to twice B in our example. And uh, except the bulldogs, that they have quite a bit of fat in there, they can be wider than that we can see the cardiac silhouette and here we have a nice measurement we measure the maximal width of the cardiac silhouette and then go to the ninth rib three four five six seven eight nine let's say and we move it there in the dog the width maximal width of the heart at the level of the ninth rib should be less than 60% of the width of the chest. In the cat, although this is mainly for the dog, 
doesn't bother if we put some things for cuts also it's about 50 percent less than 50 percent of the wheat at the same level now for the cardiac silhouette we use the clock approach so 12 to 1 within aorta 1 to 2 pulmonic artery 2 to 3 left atrium 3 to 6 left ventricle 6 to 9 right ventricle and 9 to 11 right atrium so it depends where we see the bulge we assume that is the uh, actual chamber that is enlarged bear in mind the left atrium is sitting something like that so if it is extremely large you're going to have a bulge at about 7 o'clock but again Radiography is not the most sensitive for the evaluation of the cardiac silhouette and although we can see more about evidence of failure is not the ideal we all know it's echocardiography as it stands today. On the VDD view, view you have to watch out the superimposition of the scapula that will give some increased opacity especially in the cranial lung lobes and the spine and the superimposed bone that may confuse the appearance. The coda vena cava lies at the back. We can see the aorta as it comes back. And basically that will be the various organs. Now before I finish this small, quick, anatomical explanation, let's see a little bit about projections. They are not always possible to identify especially in abnormal thoraxes but in most cases you may be able to see so when the animal lies on the right side the crust of the diaphragm is parallel to each other coda vena cava enters the first crust and the gas in the stomach is in the front end body so right lateral parallel crust of the diaphragm coda vena cava enters the first which is right and the gas in the stomach is in the fundus and body while on the left lateral crust of the diaphragm creates a corner coda vena cava enters the second crust which is the right now remember the dependent crust is always more cranially and gas is in the pylorus because normally that's the upper most so right lateral parallel diaphragm left lateral gas of the diaphragm is in the corner creates a corner, coda vena cava enters the first crust on the right lateral, the second on the left, and the gas in the stomach is in the fundus and body on the right lateral in the pylorus on the left. And just finishing up, ventrodorsal dorsal ventral, when it's possible, ventrodorsal we have three bulges of the diaphragm, the crust and cupola, what they like to call the Mickey Mouse appearance, and there is a gap between the apex of the heart and the diaphragm and here we can see sometimes the lines which is a line which is the codo ventral mediastinal reflection it is as thin as a simple line as you can identify from this we cannot see much of the mediastinum but we can see the mediastinal organs on the dorsal ventral with the animal on the sternum the diaphragm appears uniform like a british policeman's heart and the cardiac silhouette overlies the diaphragm another thing you can use if there is enough gas in the stomach is that on the ventral dorsal most of the gas will be in the pylorus while if you have gas in the dorsal ventral the gas will be in the fundus because remember gas always goes up thank you for your time and i hope you enjoyed